Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Glasnevin Cemetery, Dublin. Here we are at the final resting place of Christy Brown and it says in loving memory of our dear parents Patrick Brown who died 1955, Bridget Brown August 1968 and their son Christy, author and artist died the 6th of September 1981. Christy Brown was an Irish writer and painter who had cerebral palsy and was able to write or type only with the toes of one foot. His most recognised work is his autobiography, titled My Left Foot. It was later made into a 1989 Academy Award winning movie of the same name, starring Daniel Day-Lewis as Christy Brown and Brenda Fricker as Christy Brown's mother. Christy Brown was born into a working-class Irish family at the Rotunda Hospital Dublin in 1932. He had 22 siblings. Out of these 22, 13 lived while 9 died in infancy. After his birth, Doctors discovered that he had severe cerebral palsy, a neurological disorder which left him almost entirely paralysed in his limbs. Though urged to commit him to hospital, Brown's parents were unswayed and subsequently determined to raise him at home with their other children. 
Christie had learned to both write and draw himself. With the only limb over which he had unequivocal control, his left leg. At his home in Dublin. Quietly, but not idly, for he leads a very full life. He divides his time between his paint box and his typewriter, between his two careers, that is, of artist and author. His paintings are full of colour and life, and no one looking at them would ever guess the circumstances under which they were painted. Some of them have still life subjects, simple everyday things like a bowl of fruit or a vase of flowers. But in others, he lets his fancy and imagination take flight. And he paints scenes and landscapes and events that he himself has only seen in his mind's eye. For him, his paintbrush is a means of escape, a means of self-expression, an outlet through which flows all his love of life and movement and activity. He sees things the way a child sees them, as something new and strange and exciting, and he paints them the same way. It's the painting of a man who's never been able to take anything for granted. Everything he has, no matter how ordinary, he's had to fight for. And even today, that fight is still going on. There's still the same temptation to give in to discouragement, to abandon the struggle, to sink under the daily burden of living. Well, Christy, you've certainly got great variety in your paintings, both in the subjects that you have chosen and also in your style. Are you still at the experimental stage? Yes. So you still regard yourself as a pupil of art? Yes. Have you a teacher at the moment? I have. Uh, from the College of Art, is it? Uh, yes. Do you, do you think you'll one day be a full-time professional artist? Uh, I hope so. Of course, you've already had... That's ha my aim. That's your aim. <laughs> you've already had uh, some exhibitions, haven't you? I have two. Yes. Well, through the Disabled Artists Fund, you can uh, sell your paintings that way. When my left foot became a literary sensation, one of the many people who wrote letters to Christy Brown, was married American woman, Beth Moore. Brown and Moore became regular correspondents, and in 1960, Brown went on a holiday to North America and stayed with Moore at her home in Connecticut. When they met again in 1965, they began an affair. Brown journeyed to Connecticut once more to finish his magnum opus, which he had been developing for years. He finally did so in 1967 with help from Moore, who introduced and administered a strict working regime, mostly by denying him alcohol, on which Brown was dependent, until a day's work was completed. The book titled Down All the Days was published in 1970 and was inscribed with the dedication to Moore that read, For Bet who with such gentle ferocity finally whipped me into finishing this book. Brown's self-proclaimed masterpiece, Down All the Days, was an ambitious project drawn largely from a playful expansion of My Left Foot. It also became an international bestseller translated into 14 languages. Christie's health deteriorated and became mainly recluse in his last years. Sadly, Christie passed away on the 6th of September 1981, aged 49 years old. So there we have it, guys. A remarkable story of a very remarkable man who made the impossible possible. Rest in peace, Christie Brown and all his family. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. God bless and take care.